What's up, everybody? Mr. Kozet back with another video lesson. Today's topic is solving rational inequalities. Uh, this is part two of a two-part series. Uh, go back and check out part one if you're interested in solving rational equations. But today, our point of emphasis is going to be specifically on inequalities. Before we get any further, I have got to tell you, today's a great day to be live, y'all. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, please hear me say that. Today is a great day to be alive, and I am so happy that you found this video and that we're spending this time together uh, learning some math. Uh, so all you need to know uh, to move on and to keep, uh, keep pressing on in this video is you need something to write with, you need something to write on, and you got to have a good attitude because today's lesson is so fun. I got to tell you, I say a lot of them are fun, but this one is really fun. So uh, let's just dive right in. Let's get after it. Okay. So hopefully you're ready because here we go. So 8.6, uh, here are basically three steps that I would tell you that would work on any of these inequalities. Okay. Number one, find any X values that are excluded, or that means off limits. Okay. What may, what's, what is that? It's any X value that makes a denominator equal to zero is excluded. We're collecting interesting X values here. Okay. Number two, it says solve the inequality just like an equation. We're going to solve it just like an equation. In fact, we're going to replace the inequality symbols with equal signs and we're going to solve it from there. And then step number three is where you're going to get a little confused at the beginning, but I promise you that if you bear with me and you keep practicing, you're going to be great. Step three says set up a number line using any of those excluded X values that we found and any solutions you found as what we'll call critical points, critical numbers, okay? Then we're going to test a point from each section of the number line to figure out which sections make the inequality true, okay? These three steps on four different problems. I have four example problems that we're going to work on together. So uh, let's get into the first one. Okay, so example one is five minus three over X is less than seven over X. Okay, the first thing that I would suggest doing here is look at the denominators that have X in them. Figure out, first of all, what X values are excluded simply based on those uh, denominators. So right now, the only X value that we have that is excluded is X equals zero. If we use X equals zero, that makes these denominators zero and that's no bueno. Okay. Can't, can't happen. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve this like we would an equation. And in fact, I'm going to replace that inequality sign with an equal sign. Okay. So, uh, just like we did in 8.6 part one, we're going to get this side over here, the left side to be one fraction and we want it to equal one fraction. So one fraction equals one fraction. So uh, this is a pretty easy one. We multiply the five by X over X and we end up getting five X minus three over X equals seven over X. Okay. Uh, cross multiply and you get X times five X minus three equals seven times X. You have an X on both sides that cancel out. So then you have 5x minus 3 equals 7. Add 3 to both sides. I'm out of room. Add 3 to both sides. 5x equals 10. x equals 2. Now, once you've solved this, what do we do next? What do we do from here? Okay, well, here's what you're going to do. You're going to draw a number line. Okay, pretty normal number line. And what you're going to do is you're going to put those two critical numbers that we found on that number line, 0 and two, okay? And then pay attention closely here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick a number, okay, in, in the middle of each one of these sections. It can be any number that exists in that section. So for example, a number to the left of uh, zero is negative one. A number between zero and two that I could use is one. And then a number greater than two that I can use is a three. Okay, so now here's what you're gonna do. Once you select those points, we're gonna go through and we're gonna test those points, okay? So we're gonna start by testing x equals negative one. Now what that means, testing x equals negative one, that means we're gonna plug negative one into the original inequality and see if we get a true statement or a false statement. So when we plug that in, we end up getting five plus three is less than negative seven. So obviously five plus three is eight, 
So we get 8 is less than negative 7. That is a false statement. Therefore, what that tells me is every number uh, to the left of 0 also will give me a false statement. So that is not a part of the solution set to this inequality. So move on to your next test point, x equals 1. We're going to test a point in this middle section okay, to see what's true about these numbers in the middle section. Okay, so plug in a 1 for x. We end up getting 5 minus 3 is less than 7. 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 less than 7 is true. So that tells me that everything between 0 and 2, everything in this interval, is going to work. So that's going to be part of our solution. We have one more x to check, so let's check x equals 3. Okay? Uh, so we plug a 3 in for x. So we get 5 minus 1 is less than 7 thirds. Okay? Uh, 5 minus 1 is 4. Uh, so 4 is less than 7 thirds. That is also false. So that tells me that everything greater than 2, that section right there, is also false. So now what we've accomplished is we've identified the section of the number line that works for this inequality. So the solution here is everything from 0 to 2 written in interval notation. So that's our solution. Anything from 0, any x you pick between 0 and 2, plug it back in. This inequality is going to work. Okay. So again, to recap our process here, we collected interesting x values, x values that make the denominator equal 0, and x values that we get when we solve the inequality just like we would an equation. Then we drew a number line, and we plotted the interesting x values on that number line. Then we picked a test point in each one of those sections, plug those in and determine whether it was true or false. And that helped us figure out which of the sections, which of the intervals make this inequality true. Okay. All right. That's uh, the first one. Let's try another one. Okay. Again, same first step as the last time. We're looking for any X value that makes a denominator equal to zero. So in this case, that is also X equals zero. And that's the only one we get from that. So now we're going to go through and we're going to solve uh, this equation just like we would an equation or this inequality just like we would an equation. So first problem here is I need to get two these two fractions on the left to equal uh, one fraction. One fraction equals one fraction. So if you look at those denominators, the least common denominator I could use is actually 3x. And getting that uh, over here on the first fraction is pretty easy. Multiply by 3 over 3 on both the top and the bottom. Uh, let's go ahead and make that an equal sign because we're going to just treat this like we would an equation. Uh, so let's see here. That's 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13 over 3x equals 1 over 5. Cross multiply, you get 3x equals 13 times 5 is 65. Divide both sides by 3, and you get 65 thirds. So next thing I do is I'm going to go and I'm going to build my number line. And I'm going to put those two values on my number line, 0 and 65 thirds. Now, it would probably make sense for us to know about what 65 thirds is. So that would be uh, 3 goes into 60 20 times. Uh, 63 is 21 times. 66 would be 22 times. So that's actually 21 and 2 thirds. Now, that's going to come in handy when it's time to pick my test points. Okay, So pick a number less than 0. You can pick anything you want. Negative 1 is the easiest. Pick a number greater than 0. I'm going to pick 1, okay? And pick a number greater than 21 and 2 thirds. I'm going to keep it simple and just use a 22, okay? All right, so now the next step is we're going to test those three points to see what's true and what's false. So let's start by testing x equals negative 1. Now, remember, when we test those points, we plug them back in the original inequality, and we're trying to determine if we get a true statement or a false statement. So that would give me negative 4 minus 1 -third is less than 1 -fifth. okay? Well, I can actually stop here, okay, because I know that a negative minus another negative is going to be less than a positive number. So that is a true statement. 
So that tells me that everything to the left of zero is also going to be true, okay? So let's plug in our next value, x equals one, okay? So that would give me positive four plus one third is less than one fifth. Well, I can actually stop here because I know that four plus one third is going to be much larger than one fifth. So this is actually a false inequality. So that tells me that everything between zero and 65 thirds is also false, okay? Now, most of the time, these pattern, this actually follows a pattern where it alternates. So if one's false, I'm sorry, one's true, false, true, okay? Try really hard to fight the temptation and just alternate that pattern, okay? Uh, so we're gonna plug in a 22 for x and see what we get. Oh gosh, this is pretty ugly. Okay, um, I'm not afraid. So 4 over 22 plus 1 over 66, my goodness, is less than 1 fifth. Ugh, goodness. Okay, so um, 4 over 22 uh, is actually 12 over 66. Is that right? 12 over 66 plus, because uh, 22 times 3, right? 66, so 12 plus, or 12 uh, over 66 plus 1 over 66. Um, gosh, I'd probably just punch that in the calculator, guys. I'd probably do 4 over 22 plus 1 over 66, and that's what I'm doing right now, guys. Uh, I'm doing 4 over 22, and I'm adding 1 over 66, and I'm comparing that. So what I end up getting is 0.197. Is that less than 0, 0.0? Uh, that is, in fact, true. Uh, that I said 0, 0.0, 0.2, okay? Sorry, that uh, those ugly fractions threw me off a little bit. So that is a true statement. So that is actually tells us that that section is true as well. Now, pay, pay close attention to how we write our solution when we have actually two sections that are true. We have to use a union, just like we did when we'd write domain and range for rational functions when we were talking about the graphs. So the first section goes from negative infinity to zero. Union, because we have a second part, and then that part, second part goes from 65 thirds all the way to infinity. So you pick any number in one of these two regions and you get a true statement when you plug that back in your inequality. Okay? Moving on, example number three. Okay, oh man, this one's already set up pretty nicely for us here. Okay? Uh, first step is to identify any x value that makes the denominator equal to zero. So here we have x equals zero, and we actually have a second one. We have x equals negative one-half, because when I set 2x plus 1 equal to zero, I get x equals negative one-half. So now that I've identified all the x values that make a denominator equal zero, my next step is to get one fraction equals one fraction, which I actually already have. So now I can jump straight to the cross multiplication. 5 times 2x plus 1 equals 9 times x. So we end up getting 10x plus 5 equals 9x. Subtract the 9 on both sides and you get x equals negative 5. x equals negative 5. Okay? So now what we're going to do, we are going to draw our number line. Okay? And we're going to plot those three points on our number line. Make sure you go in the appropriate numerical order. Negative 5, whoops, negative 1 half, and 0. Negative 5, negative 1 half, and 0. Okay, so now you're going to pick a number in each one of those four sections. So now we're going to test four different numbers, okay? Uh, and we're going to pick a number in one of those sections. So let's do negative 6. Uh, let's do negative 1. Ooh, this is unpleasant. A number between negative 1 half and 0, I'm just going to go negative 1 fourth. And a number greater than 0, I'm going to go with 1. Okay? So now let's go through our process of testing those points. So I like to go in order. So x equals uh, negative 6. So we plug that in, we get negative 5 sixths is less than uh, is less than uh, 9 over negative 12 plus 1 is 9 over negative 11. Is that true? 9 over negative 11? I think that's true. 
Okay. Uh, so we've got to figure out oh, if this is a true statement or a false statement. Um, so again, I would go to my calculator and figure that out. Uh, negative 5 over 6 is negative 0 0.83 repeating. And then I would do 9 divided by negative 11. And I get negative uh, 818 repeating. Okay. Uh, and that is actually true. Okay. That is a true statement. Uh, so everything less than negative 5 uh, is a true statement. Okay, it is a true statement. So we'll put a check mark on that section there. Okay, next we're going to test uh, x equals negative 1. Okay, we'll test x equals negative 1. Uh, so when we plug that in, that gives us uh, negative 5 is less than uh, negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 1 is negative 1. So that gives me uh, negative 9. Okay, uh, so 5 is less than uh, negative 9. That is not true. Okay, that's not true. So that tells me everything between negative five and negative one half is also not true. Okay, uh, this is the one that you're probably really dreading as we plug in negative one fourth. Okay, uh, okay, when I plug negative one fourth in here, okay, that's a fraction within a fraction. So we multiply that by the reciprocal. So that actually ends up getting us negative 20. Okay, is less than, uh, okay, so let's think about this. 2 times negative 1 fourth is negative 1 half. Negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half. 9 divided by positive 1 half is 18. So negative 20 is, in fact, greater than 18. Okay, so that is uh, a true section between negative 1 half and 0. And then let's test our last point here. Let me move some things around, give myself a little bit more room. So now let's test our last point, which is x equals 1. So we end up getting 5 is less than 9 over 3 plus uh, 1 is 4. Um, I'm sorry, no, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that is false. That's not true. So that tells us everything greater than 0 is false as well. And here, take a look at that again. You're, you notice that alternating pattern again. True, false, true, false. Okay, it's always, it's almost always going to alternate like that. But again, don't just assume because you got the first one that you know the rest of them. Because what if you made a mistake on the first one? So it's always a good idea to test those points. It's a good self-check. Okay, so now all we do is we, get, is we gather uh, those sections that are true. We go from negative infinity to negative 5. Union... Um, negative one half to zero represents our solutions. Okay. All right, guys, we got one more problem that we're going to work on together. Uh, number four. And now I will tell you, this one took me a little bit of room. Uh, it's going to stretch me out to a second, uh, second sheet here. Uh, but that's okay. We're ready for it. Okay. So first step is identify any X value that makes a denominator equal zero. So that's easy. We look at x minus 2 and say that when x equals 2 gives us a denominator of 0. So that's going to be one of the numbers on our number line. Okay. So now the next step is we want to get these two fractions to be one fraction. Uh, so the, the denominator I'm going to use is 3 times x minus 2. So that first fraction is missing the x minus 2. So multiply by an x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. The second fraction is missing the, not an x, it's missing a 3. Okay, so multiply by a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom. Okay, uh, so clean up the left-hand side. We get um, x squared minus 2x minus 3 all over 3 times x minus 2 equals x plus 1 over 4. Okay. Uh, now, what you can do here is you can cross multiply. Uh, so we get 4 times x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. Okay. Now, what I would also do is I see that this uh, trinomial can be factored to x minus 3 times x plus 1. And then what you should see is you have an x plus 1 on both sides of this equation. And yes, you can cancel those. But here's the catch. Pay attention. Pay close attention. 
If you cancel those, you have to add x equals negative 1 to your list. We're going to add x equals negative 1 to our list up here, okay? Because that's going to be an important x value that comes, comes back to, uh, to do some interesting things for us. So make sure that if you cancel out a term like that, like we did here, uh, canceling the x plus 1 and the x plus 1, Make sure you collect that x value and add it to your list. You're collecting important, interesting x values here, okay? All right, so now we have 4x minus 12 equals 3x minus 6. Uh, subtract 3x on both sides, I get x. Add 12 to both sides, I get 6. So there are my three important x values. x equals 2, x equals negative 1, and x equals 6. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, just for the sake of, of more space, I'm going to build my number line over here. I've got my three values. Actually, I'm going to do those in red so they stand out a little bit better. My three x values were negative 1, 2, and 6. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to, you know the, you know the drill, pick a test point in, on the inside of each one of those sections. So I'm going to do negative 2, I'm going to do 0, I'm going to do 3, and I'm going to do 7. Okay, again, you have a lot of flexibility here with these numbers that you pick. You don't have to pick the same ones that I did. You'll still get the same result, the same solution. I just like to try to pick numbers that are small and easy to work with. Uh, so the other thing that I need to write down really quickly is I need to write down uh, the original inequality, so I don't have to keep going back and forth. So it was x uh, over 3 minus 1 over x minus 2 is less than x plus 1 over 4. Okay, now we get the fun part of testing these points. So let's test x equals negative 2. So I plug negative 2 in for each x. So I get negative 2 thirds minus 1 over negative 4 is less than uh, negative 2 is negative 1 fourth, okay? Uh, so I end up getting when I, uh, these are two fractions that are, these are a little bit easier to combine. We get negative 5 twelfths is less than uh, negative 1 fourth, uh, and that is true. That is true. Remember with negative numbers, the closer to zero you are, zero you are the larger that value is. So we have a true statement. Uh, between negative infinity and negative 1. So now the next one I'm going to test is I'm going to test x equals 0. Okay, uh, so I get 0 minus 1 over negative 2 is less than 1 fourth. Well, that simplifies to positive 1 half is less than 1 fourth, and that is false. That is false, so we uh, that is not a true statement. So that means everything between negative 1 and 2 is also false. Okay, let's uh, keep moving on. Test x equals 3. So we get 1 minus um, 1 is less than 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 over 1 is 4. Or, um, 4 over 4 is 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. 0 is less than 1. That is true. So that tells us everything between 2 and 6 is a true statement. And as you've seen this pattern, you could probably take a pretty good guess at what's going to happen when I test 7. But let's just uh, check it just to make sure. So x equals 7. So when we plug that in, we end up getting 7 thirds minus uh, 1 over 5 is less than 9 fourths. Uh, okay, so we end up getting uh, 9 fourths is 2. Uh, 7 thirds minus 1 over 5, that's 21 fifteenths um, minus, uh, let's see, 21 fifteenths. No, I'm sorry. So, yeah, multiply that by 5, that's 35 fifteenths minus um, 3 fifteenths. It'd be 32 fifteenths on one side. And if I converted 2 to fifteenths, that would be 30 over 15, which is false. That's not true. 30 over 15 is larger, is not larger than 32 fifteenths. So not surprised that pattern again. Remember, you, the pattern is usually false, true, false, true, or it alternates uh, true, false, true, false like this. So now that we've got that completed, we're ready to put uh, our multiple parts together. So the first part is negative infinity to negative 1. 
and then the second part is from 2 to 6. And that represents all the x values that make this inequality true. Now, if you lasted this far and you're still with me, one thing I want to point out to you that a lot of times people make mistakes on this is the numbers that they use. Remember that you have to actually use your critical numbers here. A lot of times people will get confused, and for these numbers in their intervals, they'll use the numbers that they tested. So pay very close attention that these numbers here have to be the numbers of your, crit your critical numbers, not your test values, okay? So my people, that's all I've got for you for quadra uh, not quadratic, uh, rational inequalities. Uh, I hope that it was helpful for you. Uh, if you need anything with this lesson, please feel free to let me know. Uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you next time. Talk to you later.